Broussard watercolors. Today I'm going to do a live um, watercolor painting on Twitch and I'll upload it to YouTube at a later date. So if you can give a like and a subscribe down below, I'd greatly appreciate it. This video is going to be longer than the usual one since it's live and there'll be pauses for drying off and kind of chatting with people in the live chat if they come in. So without further ado, we'll just pull up my Kindle on the side so I can see everything and make sure we have everything situated nice and neat. And we'll jump into it. So today's idea, it's Friday and um, to be frank, it was kind of a really rough day at work and um, a rough day lung wise with um, like post COVID. So today is going to be kind of um, an experiment painting in a style that I haven't tried in 10 years and we'll see what happens and I never tried it in watercolor. There was a Polish painter who you may be familiar with um, named Beksinski who is deceased unfortunately he was um, I believe killed uh, tragically by his neighbor over a couple hundred dollars he didn't know the neighbor I think the neighbor just wanted to borrow money or something and the neighbor killed him um, Polish painter who painted uh, some kind of really just dark um, apocalyptic type art and in college when I did oils and all the other stuff I tried painting some of his um, paintings in oils. That was about this point, let's say just 10 years ago. And, um, you know, some of his stuff made its way into some like sketches that I had tried because I just found it really fascinating. Then enter my hiatus from art and then my re-entry into art with Chinese flower painting, excuse me, and then Chinese brush painting and then Western watercolors, and then reintroduction of oils and learning wash. Uh, I figured that I would try to paint in this gentleman's style in watercolor. So I apologize in advance if this painting comes out depressingly uh, dark and dismal, but uh, it's something that I'd kind of want to try. So I'm going to try it in watercolor. We'll see what happens. And um, I might add gouache on top of it to get kind of that oil feel to it. So it's going to be different. And we'll see. I'm going to take raw sienna. I think I'm going to really plow it in. I have a... Uh, picture book of his art and I remember reading somewhere either in the book or somewhere else that being in Poland and during that time period I guess the second half of the 1900s uh, pigments and paints were hard to come by so he painted with what he could get and I'm sure he lived around a lot of the aftermath of um, the wars. So, raw sienna. And I'm thinking, I put yellow ochre on the palette. I'm thinking I'll get that kind of nice dark feeling to, um, or a nice opaque oil feeling. We'll see. So besides that, I think from what I recall, so I haven't done any um, recent research on them, there is a video on YouTube that I came across a few years ago that was in Polish 
you know, because the gentleman was in Pol you know, Polish, and it was um, of him painting. This is uh, Burnt Umber right here. And my friend Conrad, I think I asked my friend Conrad to um, translate it for me, because he was Polish, still is Polish. And, um, but I don't really remember too much of what was in the video. I think it was kind of a short clip. It might still be up on YouTube. I'll have to look for it. I do recall coming across um, a YouTube channel that had like kind of a sequence of his paintings. You know how like if you look up Rembrandt paintings on YouTube, it might be every 10 seconds they rotate to a different one or something like that. This is burnt umber. I also put raw umber out because I was fingering if um, he was working with pigments that were I don't know if they were smuggled into the country or what. I think raw umber would have been pretty common. Plus it might help recede this dark background. I'm just kind of pushing my paint back and forth. I have a, uh, my other Kindle up with a picture of one of his artworks on it. I'm just trying to get the color feel first. What's going to wind up in it, I really don't know. But um, it could be anywhere from a, a cross to a pile of bones or uh, deformed buses or figures. Who knows? Catching a lot of glare on the camera right there. Let's see if that affects it on the paper. Let's grab some yellow ochre. Yeah, so you see kind of a little bit the opacity of it. I think it wasn't this kind of light, it's this light that's causing that glare. I do have a lot of water and pigment down, so there'll be a reflection there. This is raw umber. I even put out two um, containers of water just in case I went the gouache route. Give this is a horizon line back here. Let me give some textural ideas while I move this light over to the side. And what I'm doing is just flattening out my paper since it's so saturated. It's um, buckling a little bit, but it should be good. I want to mix a little bit of ultramarine into these earth tones. You just get dark. I don't want really any blue to show through. I just want A dark buildup of this background.
try to get a nice gradation. Get dark all along that horizon. This is Payne's Gray. I remember working in watercolor. We are going to have a light uh, effect where everything's going to lighten up when it dries off. I'm really trying to pile my darks in. I'm not adding any water to the brush because I'll start getting the cauliflower effects and I don't want that. I'm just working on a gradation. Moving that light over a little bit more. I don't really want any semblance of grass, really. At least, no, I don't want my, I don't want any grass type effects yet. Who knows? Maybe later on it'll work. I'll grab a little bit more. Grab that. This is um, the yellow ochre. I'm just piling it in up here. I feel like it's not coming across good in the film on the live stream. Or Payne's Gray. This is the far horizon, but it's not so much I want it to be trees or anything like that. I want it to be part of the sky. So it's kind of just trying to develop an atmospheric feel to things. And I almost feel like a brush stroke vertically, like going in this direction, was helping it read as trees while horizontal strokes let me get more um, of that sky effect. Let's bring this build up all the way over. Let me see what happens. It's interesting how it takes on a greenish feel to it. It must be the black and the um, the black and the Payne's gray with um, the raw sienna. 
or the ochre causing that greenish feel to things. That's fine, I'm okay with that. And I'm kind of working the whole area just so that Keeping everything wet and wet. Let's grab more Payne's Gray. I'm going to do horizontal strokes here. I think I'll allow tree groupings in the distance to start forming. And while I do that, I'll ramble a little bit about things that are taking place. So um, I mention this often, the color shift that will take, the, the lighting that will take place. That's because watercolor has water in it. Um, the best way to think of it is uh, this driveway or the sidewalk. If it gets wet, it looks darker. It's because the light is um, passing through both the water and the color of the stone coming up. And... Um, and it's shifting in value. And if you lighten, if you have dried concrete, it'll look um, lighter. So it's just the water that's making it look dark, so it dries off. And that's what's happening with the watercolor. So I'm trying to go as dark as I can in anticipation of that shift. Trying to get textural ideas to build up this landscape. I think, unfortunately, my background is going to get um, like dark, not just in the uh, tonal sense, but in the um, subject matter. And I'm wondering how I should approach it. Here I have the silver black velvet, number one rigger. And get that coming up straight. So we're still wet and wet. And um and I apologize in advance. If the subject matter, you know, it's just dark or spooky. But thinking just in the distance. crosses and how that affects the foreground we'll see and I'm going wet and wet I should probably wait a little bit I do use that background technique of the wet and wet it's for diffused trees but I don't know how it'll work for this because you see we have the cauliflower effect that took place on this one We could, I want them to stay far back. Picture plane. 
if you're following along, you're always more than welcome to follow along with one of the paintings. Of course, you're always welcome to sign your name to it. And um, I, I scoffed right there just because I know this is like kind of dark. Um, but of course, you're always welcome to uh, sign your name to it and sell it. I want you guys you know, to succeed and prosper. I'm uh, thinking that at some point I'm going to scrape crosses in the background as well, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Use my little spray bottle right here. I want to wet the foreground a little bit, play around some. Oh, and also I was going to say, if you... Uh, want to follow along and you're like oh it's too dark you know you can always turn these into uh, sailboats just add some uh, rigging lines Oh yeah, um, I use a blow dryer. I have a blow dryer right here. When I live stream, I try not to use the blow dryer too much, um, just because of you know the the noise and if people have headphones on and stuff like that. But I like to play around wet and wet quite a bit in the painting, and. Um, Yeah. Yeah, but I'll use a blow dryer. Usually, when I'm doing landscapes, and my landscapes are usually moody, uh, more tonalist. I'll um, I'll do a wet and wet stage, and it'll be like this, kind of wet and wet, but it'll be, you know, more lively. And then um, I'll do a dry off, and everything will soften and blend together. And then on top of that, I'll do a dry stage, and that helps build a really interesting contract, uh, con contrast between the soft and the, um, the crisp. Also, just to give you guys some ideas, um, with the wet and wet, you can, what I like to do is like feed in some color for tree leaves, and they'll diffuse and soften. And then on the dry, I'll go in with um, the uh, hake brush and stipple on top of that. And I'll get a sense of depth from the diffusion and that. Right now I'm just taking a credit card piece of one and just kind of scraping little rocks and nooks and crannies. What I'll wind up putting on the ground, I don't know. Since this is in the style of Beksinski, there's you know a lot of um, broken, blown out um, buildings and cars and chairs and stuff like that and bones. But uh, being that this is gonna be a fast painting, it's gonna take like an hour or so. I'm not gonna do something like that. I'm gonna scrape. So I'm trying to choose the right time to scrape because we'll get um, some backfill if it's too wet or we won't be able to scrape if it's too dry. Hopefully that's not ruining the illusion, but we can come in later on.
I think. And now I want to come in closer. Pauses. And I think from these I'll start trying to um, hang things. Oh, hey, how's it going? Miss Stab. <laughs> How's it going? Um, I'm out in uh, about four hours from you if you're in Houston. I'm in um, Louisiana, uh, Vermilion Parish. So this is um, kind of based off of Bexinski style painting. And just kind of making it up as I go with the flow, but I have a photo of his on the side and um, just kind of getting some idea. How do you uh, do with the, the storm? Um, the freeze in Houston. I admin a painting page. Well, no, I moderate a painting page. Um, Ron Ranson Disciples, where we do fast and loose landscape painting. And um, one of the admins, Matthew Clemens, was out there for five days with no electricity. And um, you know, in the single digits. Just the idea of maybe a bones or a body hanging from these crosses. It's gonna get dark, I think, and I apologize. But that's what I said I would do. Let's see. Thankfully, I think we're on a power grid with sewage treatment plants. So our power didn't go down. That's good. Water was on. But mostly on with okay pressure. Dodge all the boring water. No, so very lucky. Had a friend with us stay. I wasn't so lucky at their place. Oh, that's good. That's really good to hear. Um, I mean, it, it would have been really hard going through that. Um, definitely best way to describe it like a human, humanitarian disaster. It's just some pure raw sienna. I don't know if I should be doing kind of a pure pigment, but let's see. The interesting thing in the Betsinski paintings that I'm looking at it has ladders leaning up against it. So I think I'll add that element there. Nope, turn back on. Is the uh, music in the background too loud from the other room? I don't want like YouTuber Twitch to mute it. I hate your partner. Okay, so that's good, yeah. If you're in an area where you're not dealing with disaster, <laughs> where, you're, well, where you're surviving a disaster, that's hard to leave that place. Okay, that's good. Thank you.
Um, let's see, I, I don't kind of not like how they're both leading in the same direction, but I'll probably do another element. Um, the one that I'm referring to has a big cross dead center, so I think I'll go ahead and put that in now. Yeah, where I, I rent a house, and it's a um, two-bedroom house, old, um, small. We have, you know, my art room, and then we have the bedroom, living room, and kitchen. And um, we uh, are right near the river, which, since I moved here, there's been, you know, the flooding, and there's that 2016 flooding and the two hurricanes, or a few hurricanes. But fortunately, um, this hasn't flooded. And when I lost power, it was just for like two days. I'm trying to get the illusion of kind of texture and stuff on the ground. So being on Twitch, you um, just watch, or you, you paint it all, or um, do you live stream it all? Just these like bone structures here, which. Um, like I had started in the video, I had talked about how um, about 10 years ago, before I had taken my hiatus from oils or painting in general, I had looked at Bitsinski's works. And I was actually getting pretty good at that. So I'm using the number four rigger here and trying to get the illusion of those elements. Church wise, I mostly watch. I do enjoy a little painting and have me paint. Okay. Oh, really? That's cool. Do you post your work online or anything or? Um, do a little ladder right here. Uh, during the COVID lockdown, I watched a lot on Twitch, but now that work has started up again, I, um, I didn't really get much chance to watch Twitch. Dave, hey, can you lower that a little bit, please? Okay. I share on a lot of different um, Facebook pages. Uh, you know, because I have the YouTube channel and um, I do a lot of painting videos. And I, I'm, I'm a school teacher by trade. I teach math and physics and I'm certified to teach art. And this kind of satisfies a need to teach. Um, but I share on a lot of different pages on Facebook and uh, Reddit and kind of do like descriptions of what I did. Something like this, I don't think I would really share. Um, or maybe I would talk about the buildup of the atmospheric effect in the background. I 
then I think, you know, sharing on that type of stuff and you know, doing the Twitch and all that will help build up the YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So then, you know, building up the YouTube channel, you know, there's uh, some, you know, monetary pay through advertisements. And that just started, which is nice. You know, it's a little supplemental income to a teacher's salary. And then, um, you know, sometimes that draws people to the Etsy page and I might get a sale there. Or, um, you know, people will join the, the Patreon, and um, which is nice. I think we should do another cross. Let's see, I like painting and art in general. Decompression for work. Which, oh, oh yeah, the therapist. That must be, that must be pretty rough. I mean, I'm sure you enjoy the profession, but um, I can imagine some of the stuff that you hear must be rough. I almost titled this one a depression painting <laughs> because of um you know the style and all that. But I didn't just what I think I called it dark fantasy art is the stream. Yeah. You know, with the teachers, there's a, there's a lot of teachers that come home and will spend hours and hours lesson planning, worry about that stuff. And um, my first year, I woke up, you know, the middle of the night, like, just, like, cursing. You know, like, not, you know, not, not audibly cursing, but just, like, in angst from... Uh, from teaching and bringing all that home. So you really have to separate it from your life. Oh, thank you. So, um, so you've been into the dark fantasy. Uh, so are you familiar with Bek Beksinski, the Polish painter who's uh, deceased? That's, that's who I'm styling this after. I feel like I may have a ruined the illusion of depth with this one right here because of its size. If I do some small stuff around it will help make it the closing. Oh, your husband knows Bixinski? Yeah. This one we could get darker. Um, there was a local painter who I believe is deceased now. He taught at University of Louisiana at Lafayette, and I did not have him as a professor, unfortunately. Um, from what I heard, he wasn't really a good professor, but he was like drawing all the time. His name was uh, Tom Sechrist, and um, his artwork was amazing. I was a college student and I went to a local place and inquired about purchasing some of his art. But I didn't wind up doing it and I regret it because I just really enjoyed it. And um, you know, 
I, I around the house we have like my artwork hanging up some where we'll have uh, paintings that like my fiance has like picked up at um, Hobby Lobby or something like that so I never really purchased art but for me to want to purchase art really <laughs> meant something I guess Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, the trumpet with all that, that's crazy. Using the card to scrape wet and wet, start getting those texture. I just don't like how proportional I made that one. The, the proportions of this one. I could try and pull up the side of it. Actually, I had seen somewhere online somebody actually had gotten a tattoo of that uh, trumpet with the the trumpet with all the um, knuckle joints. I didn't really plan this scene out. It was kind of just the conceptual elements. But I inadvertently created a recession into this um, a view. So I may need something right here and do a triangular shape. No, oh, you said, oh my God, what, what's up? trying to just focus on a different area when I paint I try to work around the whole painting and uh, sometimes it's easy to get caught in one spot but I like to try to develop the whole thing at once The painting that I'm looking at, that I'm kind of referencing, has um, a lot of just broken furniture and stuff in it. And rather than sitting here and painting all that broken furniture or the idea of it, yeah, like I'm kind of just doing gestural build up. And hopefully. Can get red as wood litter. Let's grab a nice light. Let's put a ladder up against this one. It's lighter in value, so it'll help recede. Build up some of the bone. I 
those poor chairs. So, um, you post on imaginary landscapes. No, I haven't, I haven't found that ready yet. Um, I will have to check that out I, because for me, I've looked up like watercolor tutorial, read it. I've looked up, um, like, uh, castles and stuff like that. But I should post on imaginary landscapes. I didn't even know that. Sometimes I think it's hit or miss with like knowing the name to like look up. I wonder if I can scrape out. Like you have like a skull. Yeah. Then come down off the shoulder and get that kind of bone hanging up. Wow, that's a lot of members. Do they, do people post pictures or tutorials or um, fantasy stuff like well, obviously fantasy like imaginary. That's cool. Let me write that down before I forget. Imaginary. Landscapes. Okay, I got it written down, so I'm going to remind myself. Go to communities for Nimulot Media, Pictorial, Creation of Landscapes, Places, Overrun Jungles, Barrens. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. I'm starting to see the lighting, the tonal shift take place. I had mentioned, I think, before you had come in the um, the chat, but you had asked if I use a hot um, a blow dryer or something like that. And so you're probably familiar with it, where with watercolor, you could paint in, and as it dries, it lightens up quite a bit. So in some areas, we have that happening. And with this one, I'm trying to mimic the feel of oils. Not just landscapes, I mean. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I do still lives and um, I do a little bit of portrait work. I'm just not that good at portraiture stuff yet with watercolor. Do you mind if I um, show you a uh, oil that I worked on? Um, it was kind of me showing off, and I showed it off on the last stream, but... Let me grab the oil. I'm going to show it off, because I like showing off. Well, not, you know what I mean. I think. This is just like a, a still life that I've just been working on that I'm probably done with. I need to uh, put a, you know, a finish on it, but I just like showing that off. Thank you. That one was like a lot of fun. I um, I took a box and I set it up 
where I cut a, light, uh, a hole in the side for light to come through. And I set up a still life inside it and photographed it and then painted from that. And um, I usually like only like to paint one session, but I started um, expanding on uh, the oils. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the contrast was, um, I really like that dark with that. Hey, we got Soupmaster. How you doing? Soupmaster is from Germany, I believe, if I remember correctly. To be honest, Soupmaster, I was in kind of a um, crummy mood earlier. And now I'm in a good mood. We got you know, people chatting in the chat, which is fun. And I'm painting. And it's the weekend. I think I'm going to pile stuff at the bottom of this. Oh, thank you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm painting in the style of Bixinski. Thank you so much for noticing that, Suit Master. That, oh man. That totally made my day. That's really cool. Because uh, Soup Master has seen my other paintings, and they're more, um, you know, forest and the stream type stuff and things like that. Uh, so, my fiance substituted for an art class today, and I teach at this school, and a lot of the students there are on the powerlifting team that I coach at the school, and she said, you know, a lot of those powerlifting students were there in the class and they said oh hi but then they didn't really say anything else to her beyond that because so, um we got her certified to be a referee for high school powerlifting and then state powerlifting so she refs at the meets and she helps set up yeah Yeah, Vaksinski was just phenomenal, like the the detail that he put in. I'm just trying to um, do marks to uh, kind of get that illusion of that detail in the short period. We'll see how well it works. Oh, West Side Barbell. Awesome. I, um, yeah, so I'll tell you guys about the whole powerlifting thing. So the high school team that I coach with, um, the girls team and the boys team won regionals and they'll both go to state. They, um, the boys are seated for first place 
in the boys division and the girls are seated uh, second place in the girls division. Uh, so that's going to be good. So far our boys have won three years in a row. We were most likely going to win last year, but everything shut down the week before state, you know, with COVID. So that didn't happen. And um, then after that, the guy that I coach with, and then, you know, the powerlifters, we are hosting uh, United States Powerlifting, USAPL, USA Powerlifting Collegiate Nationals in Baton Rouge. So between coaching and teaching, I've been putting together all the qualifiers and the scoring program and all that. this heel texture of this number four rigger is really helping out. School has a lot of sport prices. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by uh, prices, uh, but we were, uh, yeah, we, uh, we owe a lot of prizes. Yeah. Um, we started the program seven years ago. The guy that I coach with, he he started it and i had gotten back into just like just trying to lift and i never power lifted and he's like hey you want to assist and coach and i was like yeah sure I, I, I don't know i have no idea what i'm doing and then it kind of just really took off from there and um we've just been doing really good it took three years to get to our first state championship win. Um, I have coached one, two, three, four kids uh, to be to be national champions. Um, that's been cool. Shelby, are you okay? Oh. Um, they don't win money within the organization, but we win um, prizes because you know, it's a, the, the high school sport. So we have a ton of uh, trophies. Um, we have gotten one of our kids a college scholarship from it. Um, he actually just recently set like he is like the strongest in America, regardless of age, in his weight class. Uh, yeah, the gear um, in Louisiana high school powerlifting, you can use gear. Uh, single ply, um, the knee sleeves, single ply, um, neoprene and the um, knee wraps. Also the bench shirt. Uh, no Velcro on the um, the knee sleeves or the, the shirts. Yes, yeah, so we use the, the gear. I've never, I've never used gear, but the guy that I coach with is just a professional at figuring out gear and getting the kids trained for it. Actually, the one that we had gotten that scholarship uh, a year or two ago, he was in a bench shirt and at like 130 pound body weight, he was uh, in the weight room 
and he had only a single spotter with a bench shirt and he lost control of two 285 and he took that on the jaw and broke his jaw in two spots um i wasn't there for that um but i know it was quite traumatizing and be very angry at ourselves for allowing that to happen yeah it's um like i know a lot of people that have benched like like 600 in a bench shirt and that's uh from literally just well first of all they're strong to begin with but just that gear just adds so much to it if you learn how to use it kind of wonder if I should put a tall element right here kind of tall and thin what do y'all think in the chat like a tall thin closer across coming across If y'all say yes, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so you're saying yes, yeah, Soup Master. That's the fun thing about doing the live streams is like asking people like what you all want you know or should I do this let's do one from right down here come up I have to get it darker oh okay so it sounds like you guys are in conflict that the emptiness right here is helping draw the eye right here it's so close that you can't even see the whole thing or as close as the other ones but if it's thin it's still dead see that's what i was thinking if we went thin it would help balance it out let's try it let's go go for it actually let's see if i can find Mm -hmm. probably I had a tool that I was using that hopefully the cats the cats would have no reason to take hmm, can't find it Maybe I'll have it go off the page. the page and come off her. Is that too thin? Is that too much? Eh. It's weird the angle that I'm looking at it at. Not too much of a fan, but on my little Kindle that I have right here to watch the live stream. I kind of like it right there. I think it'll look 
interesting with a mat over it. In fact, the mat would cover up most of it, so we would just get those two lines coming in and off. Okay. Now let's actually add some little weird elements. I'm looking at one with um, it has a chair. I'm gonna try to add that chair element. Now I guess it's at the point of adding little. Um, Easter eggs to find a little chair silhouette. I don't know if it shows up on your screen because it's so small. Let's do a box shape right here. I really uh, appreciate you all coming into the chat and um, of course if you have to leave I understand. Um, not that anybody said they were going to leave, but, you know, don't feel obligated to stay. But I appreciate y'all being here. down thicker paint for um well, that's way too thick the reason i say it's too thick is that it's it's raised and i don't want um it to crack hey harrison Two thirty in the morning, and well, you guys don't have school or anything tomorrow, right? Unless they have some weird laws in Germany. I think after this, depending on how she's feeling, we'll probably watch uh, the last of the Lord of the Rings: the Return of the King. We had uh started watching the first two and I had seen them a long time ago and we watched them a few times. It's just been fun rewatching them. You can even do one that's fallen over.
<laughs> I apologize that I've stopped talking. Uh, what is my favorite medium to work with? Um, I, th I would say watercolor because I use it so much. And if I wanted to just sit down and paint like I am right now, I feel reasonably confident that within a short session I can produce an interesting piece of work you know like this is my first time ever doing this subject matter or trying to paint this own pig or this you know kind of get the illusion of oil in watercolor so it worked for me um so that's my favorite so that's why watercolor i really enjoy if i had a lot of time, oil would be my favorite. I'm not, um, I like pen and ink, but for sketching, I'm not good with pencil. I really like charcoal, but charcoal was really, really messy. Uh, do I have any contact with other artists? Yeah, um, I admin a painting page, Ron Ranson Disciples, on Facebook. And we paint fast and loose watercolors. I also share on other watercolor pages. And there were some oil painters that I talked to for a while, but um, kind of lost touch with. And yeah, so there's that. And I do like comment on uh, some oil painter paper uh, paintings like Stuart Davies and Dennis Sheehan, David Usher. Uh, me and Alan Owen became friends on Facebook. Um, Joe Menza, you might know him from YouTube tutorials. Lois Davidson. Uh, there's a lot of different like like modern YouTubists that I talk to and have um, you know, formed like acquaintances with. Right now I'm just really building up those darks. Digital painting, I find it very similar to the process of chalk pastels, minus the mass of colors in your hands. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Chalk pastels, uh, that's, first of all, chalk pastels, that's really impressive. Um, like, because of the mess and whatnot, and being able to build up those colors. And then the computer art, uh, digital painting. Um, I like the thing is like a lot of people say like oh it's not art blah, blah blah but the things that people can achieve with the digital art is just absolutely phenomenal um i've never really tried my hand at it but i know that there's a lot of work that goes into it and digital artists especially working in uh, the movie field and things like that do not get the recognition they deserve. There's one guy on Facebook, Carlos Hera, I believe, with like an H. 
he posts a lot of um, his digital artwork and the landscapes look fantastic. And my friend, John Paul Summers, who's like a director of photography, he was showing me some art that he had done uh, where it was kind of, um, I forget the terminology, not really time-lapse, but like a movement type painting uh, photography where he lets the exposure run while moving around. Oh yeah, that's another good thing about uh, digital art, opening up um, access to people that don't have art supplies. Um, yeah, I have a, uh, the, um, the tablets that be good for art. That'd be good for like downtime between classes at work and stuff like that. Should I try going for like more detail with these hanging skeletal remains or kind of just leave the illusion? Yeah, illusion works well. Okay, so I'll, I'll stick with that. Okay, I know the name Duchamp, but what did he do? Was he the one that did the um, the urinal and said that and he wrote mutt on it and it sold for like a whole bunch? Or did Duchamp actually like paint stuff? What I'm going to need to do is eventually get a, um, I have the HD, I have the Kindle 7 with that cheap $30 one to watch the live stream. And then I have HD 10 that I had gotten myself two Christmases ago to like use as photo references. I need to get a third so I can look stuff up whenever people mention things. I, I just don't remember what he did. Fish out. Just put a little bit in this corner. Let me stand up and take a look. Yes, to the urinal. Yeah, it was him. Oh, yeah, and he pooped in a can and sold it. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so you said, yeah, anything that came from him since he was an artist was considered art. Yeah. And, you know, like the shame is, I don't know, you know, his personal life, but. Golly, that guy's probably is probably more wealthy than we'll ever be. <laughs> That's part of the exhibit, yeah. There was one guy, a performance artist that I think is still alive. Yeah, that's a really unclear definition of art. There was one guy who, um, like I said, I think he might still be alive, where he did a performance piece called Shoot, where he had his friend shoot him in the arm with like a twenty two caliber rifle. And he also um, dressed as like a, they put him in a, a room with wolves and that was like the performance piece like i don't know if people are able to come and watch him be in a room with wolves 
and I don't know if part of that performance piece was also like him dressing up a little like a hermit and holding a dead rabbit and pawing at the artwork in a museum with the dead rabbit. Yeah, I don't know his name, but <laughs> there's some weird I had a professor in college who was really weird, Grady Grabachek, I can't pronounce it, he's still alive, a really nice guy, and he did um, some really weird, like he did art, and he had really interesting conceptual art. He was the person that helped me like understand that type of weird art, where he would um living in new york city he would take um a, a crate a milk crate with him and on the subway there's like these weird holes in the ceiling of the subway and he would sit the th he would sit it down and he would stand up on it and put his head in the hole so he would be on a crate standing up and his head would be hidden in a hole in the subway. And, you know, somebody would photograph him and all that. Um, but, and I know it's, it's weird, but it was to, I guess, raise awareness of the surroundings and kind of pay more attention to what's going on. Um, where he'd, he did one installation piece in Europe, which was like an old, like, I don't know if it was like a Nazi bunker or something like that, or an old World War II bunker. And he had painted, I think he had painted just some weird designs on the wall. And people were like, well, what's that? And he's like, well, you know, when you shut the lights off, you can see the, the radiation that was painted on the walls to see and demonstrate exits. And it was to raise awareness of like the installation and what they were in and whatnot. So... Sometimes conceptual art can kind of have a purpose, but then if it goes, does it survive past that? Who knows? Yeah, that little chair there. I feel like I'd want to do something like this again, this one. It's a lot of fun, and just hanging out on the live stream is just a lot of fun. I do feel like I overworked this area. I do feel like it does give the illusion of kind of um, the ground litter, but I'm not quite sure. I'll probably start wrapping things up in a few minutes. We'll put a mat over it and sign it and see how it looks. Then I'll upload it onto YouTube. By the way, I think there should be a link for my YouTube if you all want to check it out. I'll type it in here. Can I type it in here? No, I have to open in the app. It's my name, Andrew Broussard Watercolors, if you ever want to check out my other videos. brushes out the way oh you follow me on youtube and instagram thank you soup master okay so let's do a quick hit with the blow dryer so if you have earbuds on watch your ears
think if we wanted to, I'm not going to do it for this one, but down the line, um, a painting like this, we really built up the pigment, but using white gouache and mixing it in would help accentuate, you know, the bones and the um, structures. So that's a, that's an experiment for down the line, but I don't know how much, how my, um, my usual YouTube audience and painting audience in general will react to dark subjects like these, even though they're uh, interesting and whatnot. Um, do I sell my, oh, I, I sell my artwork. I have a ginormous stack over there of paintings. Um, since I'm a school teacher, and, you know, that'll make a whole bunch. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not like a pauper. I'm just saying that we don't make them a bunch as a school teacher. So if there's like a, a charity event or something like that, I'll donate a painting and then, you know, somebody can, um, you know, bid on it and then their own money. So if I do if I do a painting that I spent, what, $5 on the paper and pigments or whatever, donate that and then somebody bids a hundred dollars on it and I can get a hundred dollars for a charity. You know, that's, that's something I do, but yeah, I sell my paintings and, um, do all that fun stuff with it. In March will be the first farmer's market of the year, which I'll hopefully set up for. I don't think I have a powerlifting meet that I have to coach or score at. Yeah, those black mats are nice. I highly recommend, you know, since you all said you paint, if you go on Amazon, look for mats um, front and back. So it'll be like the, the mat and the backing board and the bag. This one is 16 by 20 with the old op opening 11 by 15. And um, I got like, let's say 10 of them for um, for maybe $60 which is a lot cheaper than Hobby Lobby if you were to buy individual mats. Um, you can also get it for an eight by 10 opening. You probably get a lot more color options. Like this one has like a nice um, bluish tone to it. You can get sets of 25 for probably about 50, the front and back in the bag. And then if you paint five by seven, there's a five by seven mat here. Oh, right on, that's a shame. Um, you can get packs of 50 of those for cheap. And then, you know, you kind of bag it up, you make it look nice. So if you're at a farmer's market or something like that, and it's already matted, it makes it easy for the, um, for the pers person buying. So, on that note, I really enjoyed y'all coming out and um, chatting. Um, I was kind of having a little bit of a crummy day, so doing this and, and talking to y'all really you know, cheered me up. Also, a fantastic dinner that my fiance cooked. She cooked some steak that she had cut up and did um, noodles in kind of an Asian fashion with broccoli and stuff in it. It was just really good because she knew I had a bad day. But... Um, Thank you guys. So I'm going to log off and hopefully I'll see you all soon. I know I recognize Soup Master's name whenever we pop in. I just got to start remembering other people's names. Yeah, it was really delicious. And um, yeah, I hope you'll stay safe out in uh, Germany. I hope you'll stay safe out in Houston. And I'll see you all soon. Yep, you're welcome for streaming, and thank you. You all have a great weekend, and be safe. Bye.